Well, we are here with Sean Anonymous today. Um, this is Grow Your Flow. Today you have a big day. It's your birthday Should show. Be. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So happy birthday. Um, Thank you. We're just going to start off with a couple of questions. How did you start into the Minneapolis um, hip hop scene? I guess that's a long story, but I uh, usually credit our breaking into the scene to a couple people. When I was uh, 17, I joined this group called Wide Ass, which you may know of. And um, me and the other MC, Tony, we went to this high respect show downtown and ended up meeting um, Big Zach from Cancer and Unicus from Cancer. So at that time, we had made like a couple demo tracks on this really shitty like digital recorder that he has. So we burnt a couple CDs and we we're just trying to get the word out there. Gave one to Zach and uh, he ended up giving us our first show at the Dinky Town. When I think. I think I was probably 18 the first time I played there, or whatever. So, yeah, those are the people that kind of got us into the scene and uh, kind of showed us the ropes. People like them, Carnage, Desdemona, put us on some stuff. And, uh, yeah, the awesome. rest is history. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, can you explain to us how um, your birthday show became such a tradition? Because this is the seventh year you're doing it, correct? Yep, this is the seventh year, yeah. Well, truthfully, at first we were just looking for an excuse to get people out. We were doing a bunch of shows at the Dinky Town, or we are probably playing at the Dinky Town, or I feel like two to three times a week or something. I feel like I pretty much lived there. They would let me crash on the couch. I'd end up drinking all night after hours at the Dinky Town, or <laughs> crash somewhere in Dinky Town and wake up at like nine in the morning and head back to the Dinky Town, or wow. get breakfast and like sleep on their couch for a bit. What was the question again? I kind of <laughs> spaced out. How did the birthday show become a tradition? Okay, yeah, yeah. We just wanted an excuse to get more people out. So for my 20th birthday, we ended up throwing a show on my birthday. I think it was a Friday that year or Wednesday. Even though those two days are not very similar. <laughs> but it was like a Friday or Wednesday or something. And, um, yeah, we threw this show. And... Uh, we had a bigger turnout than usual, and you can kind of hit people with the guilt trip a little bit, you know? <laughs> Underground marketing strategies yep. to begin with. Now it's just like tradition. Yeah. The first one was great, and then we decided to do it the second year. And by the third year, it was kind of pretty much locked in that we'd be doing this. And uh, starting at the Dinky Towner, which was like a 250-person venue and stuff, I never thought... I never thought that I'd be able to do it here. You know? right, it's yeah. crazy. I, I hope though. So maybe I did think about it. Yeah. <laughs> Starting last year, uh, we did a triple rock last year for my birthday mm -hmm. show. We almost sold it out on a very cold Thursday. So the plan was to hopefully step up to the caboose this year, but uh, we got reached out to by PBR to do this seven inch um, slash benefit show mm -hmm. for the Twin Cities Music Community Trust, and it happened to be in January, so I'm like, okay, let's combine it with my birthday show. Let's do it. Yeah. Well, how do you think you have evolved since your first birthday show as an artist? I feel like, I feel like the same kid that I was when I was 17, 18, rapping on stage at the Dinky Town, or rapping on stage at the Medusa, or at these little house parties and everything. I still get giddy for every show. I still feel amazingly excited for everything that we're lucky enough to be able to do. Um, so in that aspect, I feel the same. Um, I feel like it's gotten a lot more professional over the years. We actually... It's gotten a lot better at rapping. It's gotten a lot better at rapping, <laughs> too, hopefully. I feel like I have. perfect, yeah. Chuck you. Yep, for sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess just growing as a person and growing as an artist and your thoughts and feelings change, and that's what attracts me to hip-hop is that I can put my personal feelings out there in the world, so I guess I've just grown as a person, and hopefully that's reflected in the music, you know? It's a lot more pro now. We send out press releases and stuff. So, can you go in a little bit more um, in depth with how you landed such a big venue? I know you said that PBR yeah. reached out to you. Um, yeah, Craig hooked it up. Craig from PBR is Dimitri Killstorm from Wild Eyes. Put it really well. Um, he said that Craig is one of the unsung heroes of the Minneapolis music scene. And for a couple of years, uh, PBR has sponsored us and helped us print flyers, helped us promote shows. And so they had, he had this idea of putting out a vinyl, a seven inch vinyl 
and the proceeds would go to charity. And so he thought of, and I'm honored that he thought of me first. So he reached out, he's like, hey, you want to put out a 7-inch? We'll pay for it, and it, you can make new music, we'll pay for you to record it and put it out. And then you can also help a good cause at the same time. So we jumped on board right then. And uh, then eventually we found out that it was going to be roughly around the same time as my birthday. So I'm like, okay, let's do it. Let's combine it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Wide Eyes and Philip Morris, um, native Chicago rapper, um, mm -hmm. dropped. you guys dropped a, uh, an EP together we recently, sure did. Uh, December yeah. or November? Um, November, yeah. Okay. How did you end up linking up with Pimo? That goes, and it's, yeah, it's a trip to think about how long I've known that guy and how good of a friend that we've become. Because I met him probably five years ago. He was living down in Chicago, and he threw this amazing show at a Shakespearean pavilion outside. It was, it was actually my first time being in Chicago, and it was a real amazing way to spend my first day in Chicago at this amazing hip-hop slash multi-genre outdoor video premiere slash house party with kegs and it was, it was a whole apartment building or like four apartment buildings got together and threw this party so it was this little enclave and all the people from the apartment buildings and outside came out in this Shakespearean pavilion and I was so pumped but then right before we were about to go on the cops came and shut it down oh, no. as we were about to go on stage and so Whoa. Philip felt bad or something and uh, ended up taking us to this storytelling open mic at this amazing underground venue. And I ended up getting to meet Irvine Welsh that night, the guy who wrote Train Spotting and stuff like that. Wow. Crazy night. So that was my first night down in Chicago. He hooked me up. So eventually, like throughout the years, we just went back and forth. I put him on my birthday show. He put me on his birthday show. I played his birthday show the past I think five years in a row or four years in a row and he's not been on the bill but he's performed at my birthday show for the past four years in a row and eventually you know years down the line he makes the move to Minneapolis and uh, he's uh, my roommate now and nice. yeah I think I forgot the question again no you, you answered it perfectly All right, cool. um, well you're involved with multiple genres of music do you find it difficult transitioning between them you know I am so focused on hip-hop. A lot of people ask me what type of music I like to make and what type of music I like to listen to. And I truthfully can say that I like to make a lot of different types of music, but I don't do it <laughs> all that often. I'm so focused. I feel like putting words to a beat is the best, is the thing that I'm best at. And so I've just been sticking to that. Um, I do like to play drums. I like to play keys and guitar. Dan likes to play DJ name. We all like to play instruments. That's actually how I met the Wide Eyes guys back in the day. Before I knew that they were rappers, I would go to Tony Phantom's place and I played drums, he played bass, and Dimitri would play keys. And then we all played those instruments, so we'd switch and go like round robin and uh, circle around on these different instruments. So it's definitely been a part of my music making. Um, not just the fact of being a rapper, but um, having, I went to school for sound for a little bit, so I like to keep melody and I like to keep the musicianship in doing hip hop, but really I've just been so focused on rapping and that's, I guess, who I am now. I'm this rapper guy and it's working out, so I'm just rolling with it. Good. Well, it being 2014 now, do you have any major resolutions or goals that you want to accomplish within the next year? Um, Hopefully not die. <laughs> that's one, one on everybody. My list. major goal, yeah, that's the first one. I said for the last ten years I was going to quit smoking cigarettes. We'll see if that happens. <laughs> um, I don't know. Just keep on doing the thing. Be a good person. Keep on making music and uh, hang out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. How about you? Oh wow. Quitting smoking cigarettes is a big one. For me. Nice. That's what I'm going to be trying to do. Good luck with that. Thank you. Well, it's hard. So hard. Um, what's the most memorable musical moment you've had? Ouch. <laughs> One that sticks so... out the most to you. That's a tough one. I mean, this There's... one's a pretty big deal, but... I'd say, hopefully after tonight, this will be it. Um, our first set at First Avenue last year for the end of the world. I guess it's technically two years ago. I think, or no, it was, le no, last year, whenever it was, yeah, the it's end like of the a world. Year and a month ago. Okay, so yeah, 
a year and a month ago, um, the End of the World show that we did with Trap and Big Cats and the Chalice here. It was our first um, main room gig, and it was also such a community effort, because at that point, none of us, I would say, were big enough to headline at First Ave. We decided to just combine forces and go for it, and it was just a beautiful night. I remember... Yeah. It felt like we had all just completed like a huge marathon or climbed a mountain. At the end of the night, everybody was just hugging each other and smiling. So that was a big one. Um, Open up for Macklemore down at South by Southwest this last year was also yeah, a big we, one. That we was somehow like, got on a bill that was Dessa, Why So White, K Flay, Macklemore. And then wow. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis did like a guest spot or whatever. Yeah. They did like two or three songs or something. Wow. And that was cool, that was especially crazy. to see where he got, because we opened up for Macklemore two years ago, maybe three years ago in Minneapolis mm -hmm. at the Nomad, and it was a 250-person venue. It's cool to see how far that guy's gone in two yeah. years mm -hmm. to the point where last time he was in town, I think he sold out the state fair grants. Right, there. yeah. The time before that, he did two main room shows in a row, I think on weekdays, and sold them both out in advance. Wow. Yep. That was a good one. Pete Le Soluche? Pete Soluche Black Party. I could keep on going forever and ever. <laughs> it Last was night was year. an amazing yeah. moment, too, at the girl party show. We had a little special regular Wii mix, and we did oh, a remix that was all girl party, Dessa, Linus, Meta, Spider Baby, P.O.S., me, and Philip Morris all wow. up on stage last night. That was night. insane. It was insane, oh yeah. Oh, my gosh. I could keep on going forever about this. Yeah, I was following just... the tweets of that show all night, and was, I'm like, oh, why great. can I not be there? It was tough yep. for me, too, because I knew that was going to happen, and nobody else knew, and I was just sitting there all night, oh. like, when are they going to do yeah, this? Yeah, quiet. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. All right, well, you've gotten the chance to work with some pretty kick-ass people in, the, in yeah. the past. Who have you, haven't you worked with that you're looking forward to or would like to work with? That's a good question. There's so many artists in Minneapolis that I respect and really like as people too. That's one of the things about me doing these features. Most of the people I've gotten on tracks with are people that I would hang out with in everyday life and are really cool. Some of the people I reached out to before I knew them and got them on songs that now we ended up being friends. Like I had um, on Anonymo, I had Abstract Rude and Blueprint get on a song. Yeah. And since then, kind of fostered, you know, friendships with these people, get to kick it with Abru when he's in town, and, you know, worked with other people. But um, in Minneapolis, I'd say all the cats from Doom Tree yeah. are great. All the cats from Rhyme Series are amazing. Um, I'd like to make a track with Meta sometime. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that I haven't. That would be amazing. Uh, I really want to make a song with Action Bronson sometime. If you guys could help me do that, <laughs> you can find his Well, shout out to him for you. For yeah. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I feel lucky to have worked with the people that I've worked with. I wish I could drop, or no, I don't want to drop names, but I wish I could tell you who's going to be on this next project. I'm working on a project with Dimitri Killstorm right now, and we got some features on it that are going to be really great. Cool. And it turns out that we might be doing one of the songs tonight, perhaps. Ooh. Yeah. Well, so we'll keep, keep our ears open for yeah, that. Yeah, do that. Definitely. Yeah, it'll be fun. All right, on a fun note, what mm -hmm. is a random non-musical fact about you? What's something that most people wouldn't normally know about you? <clears throat> That's a really good question. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm a vegetarian. You are? Yeah. Wow, that is awesome. I would have never, ever, ever guessed. Yeah, I don't put that out there too much because... Uh, a lot of people have a weird connotation with vegetarians and think that um, all vegetarians are going to like preach to them or something. And I feel that what you put in your body is such a personal choice that I can be mad at somebody for being a vegetarian. I can't be, be mad at somebody for eating meat. I can't be mad at whatever somebody chooses to put in their body, whether it be meat or like, even if, even if they're doing drugs, that's not even, that's not my place to step in, you know? Right. So it's such a personal decision. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a random one. Um, I don't know. I might have to get back to you. Right? No, that's fine. Yeah. You are going to be going to Ireland coming up, right? Next week? Um, in a couple days. A couple days. Ooh. Yeah, it's ridiculous. What are you most excited about on that trip? Because I know it's been a few years since you've been out there, right? Um, yeah. Uh, I'm like, most excited to see my dad. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen my dad for like two or three years or something like that. So hang out with him. My sister's going to be in town. Um, 
Also, I'm working with a couple of DJs out there, and I think I probably should have it figured out by now, like if I'm doing a show <laughs> out there, but people keep on telling me I'm doing a show, but not telling me where it is or whatever, so I'm excited to hopefully do this show that I might be doing. Um, hitting the studio with a couple of artists from Belfast and Dublin and stuff like that, and just experience the culture. I've been there about four or five times, a couple times I've been there for, I think the longest I was there was for like two months mm -hmm. in Belfast, that's where my family lives, so just kind of excited to reconnect with that and kick it and go back to the place where my blood is from, you know, right. yeah. Cool. Cool. All right, well, is there anything else that you think our fans, viewers might want to know about you, the show, anything like that? Um, just the fact that it's going to be awesome. Are you guys posting this after the show? Yeah. Just the fact that it was awesome <laughs> and, like, the best show. And that, I don't know, I guess to end it, I just feel thankful to be where I'm at. And all this stuff is popping up really fast. I just feel real grateful that people are taking the time to listen to us and taking the time to check us out and hang out. Thanks to all the people that made it possible. Thanks to everybody in the Minneapolis music scene and not in the music scene. Thanks to Minneapolis. Thanks to you who are watching. Thanks to everybody. Life is good. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it. Cool. We're done sitting with Sean Anonymous and DJ Name. This is Grow Your Flow, and you guys have a good day. Bye, guys. And I've been hibernating. Yeah, you know the way we do, but the people came and they said your name, and they probably won't wait for you. Like, text, Cali, thinking about taking a break or two. This everlasting winter, man, I'm in it, and I'll make it through. But I got cold tracks that I wrote back. Beginning of the winter when I wrote that. Got some more when the locked indoors. Thinking about a crowd.